Welcome, everybody. Can you hear me? I'm Will Shorts. I'm the director of the uh, tournament, and thank you all for coming. It is so great to see everybody here. This is. Uh, We've been through a lot for the last through a lot for the last three years. You know, the uh, 2020 ACPT was going to be the third weekend, third or fourth weekend of March, and uh, if it had been two or three weeks before, we would have squeaked by. But it was not to be. And last year, of course, we had our a virtual tournament. This year, we're back for the first time in three years. This is one of our best Friday night uh, gatherings ever, and I think it's due in part to. Uh, the first part of the program tonight, which is everyone is excited about. Um, let me. We have a. There were 476 pre-registered contestants. I think there's going to be a lot of sign-ups at the door because we cut off register online registration on Wednesday night and told people if you still want to come, then uh, sign up at the door. So we'll see. I think we're going to pass 500. Uh, the pre-registration had 32 states. District of Columbia and three Canadian provinces. Uh, people from all over. Um, this is our first ever joint in person and virtual crossword tournament. Um, people at home are not competing for prizes, but they can watch the live stream, which is being done uh, and organized by, I'll introduce him over here, Al Hassan Muhammad. Will you stand up? And uh, Al is a. Uh, And feel free to pass the link along uh, if you just go to crosswordtournament.com, our website, you should find a link there to the live stream and anybody, anywhere is welcome to watch. Let's see, I'll introduce more people tomorrow morning when everyone's here, but right now, let me introduce, there are two people, only two people who have attended all 44 championships. Uh, I am one of them. <laughs> and Nancy Schuster, who won our very first tournament in 1978. And one other contestant I'll introduce, it's our oldest contestant. 96 years old, 1979 champion, is Mary Raphael. And I'll introduce more people tomorrow, but one other person, and that's our coordinator, Michael Smith, who makes all the details of this work. Michael, are you here? Um, I'd like to ask you uh, to wear a mask at all times. We're not going to be uh, strict about enforcing that rule, but we do request. Tonight's program, um, we have something special. That's uh, Josh Wardle, who started the Wordle craze, is going to speak for a few minutes uh, about what it's been like in his, the last six months of his life. Then we're going to have a Wordle contest with six rounds, and uh, Josh and I will explain the rules. Following that will be a Pick Your Poison contest. Each puzzle will have 30 minutes. First round, you can do a cryptic or a puns and anagrams. Second round, a split decisions or a spiral. There's four combinations, and uh, there'll be prizes in each combination. Um, so there we go, and then a wine and cheese reception from 10 to 11. Uh, in the pavilion off to the side, and at the end of that, we will present the prizes for tonight's games. All right, well, without further ado, let me introduce somebody uh, you all know. How many people here solve Wordle? Raise your hand. Yeah. I won't ask how many won't solve, because uh, there might be one hand that goes up. But the, the inventor of Wordle, is going to uh, tell us what life has been like the last six months. Here's Josh Wardle. Thank you, Will. Hey, 
Hey, uh, everyone. My name is Josh Wardle, believe it or not, and I made a game called Wordle. Uh, sounds like most of you have played. Um, thank you to Will for the, for the invite, uh, my partner. Hello, who's sat over there? Hello. Uh, she and I have been playing the crossword for a long time, so to get an email from Will Shorts was obviously very exciting. I couldn't say no to this. Um, I feel like a bit, of impost a bit of an imposter, actually, here among all these uh, veteran uh, world, world game players. Um, what I wanted to do was just uh, talk to you a little bit about um, some of the experiences I've had uh, since uh, making Wordle. So uh, the first one is I, last week, was at uh, GDC, which is Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. So like this huge conference, the conference for video games. Basically, and they invited me to talk because of Wordle, uh, and I think there was a, a, people were a little surprised, right, that um, a word game could be so popular. When you think of a video games specifically, you don't think of word games, and and I think that's kind of sad. And I kind of tried to express that to the other developers there that I think, um, you know, I, I think humans are creatures of language, and if words are a fundamental part of a game. Uh, your players arrive to the game with an innate understanding of one of the core mechanics. And I, I think that's why something like Wordle can appeal to so many people, even people that don't think of themselves as word game players. It's because they use language every day, they use words every day. And so uh, the English language is so deep and it has so much uh, in interesting qualities to it. These people could really enjoy this, um, this game in a way, I think, that... Uh, they hadn't really had access to games like uh, like that before. Um, so you may also have heard, so I actually made a 2013, I, I, I created a prototype of Wordle that was pretty much the same game in 2013, so a, a long time ago. And but there were two main differences that I kind of want to cover with you today. So one was um, that you could play the game endlessly. As soon as you finish one puzzle, you just went on to the next one, and went on to the next one. Uh, so I want you to remember that, I'm going to come back to that. And then the other thing uh, that uh, uh, I did is, um, so I'm using like the, I think it was called SoPods, the dictionary, it's like the Scrabble dictionary, it's like 13,000-ish words. And the, what that prototype did is it just chose one of the words at random, and that was the word you were solving. And for a, a lot of people, including people like me, most of the words in that dictionary I have never heard of. And it, in fact, they don't look like English words to me. I can't like puzzle my way out. And so it, it was, you were kind of, um, you were like brute forcing it. You were like trying to like tease out things that you could maybe figure out. And so it became really apparent to me that the game would only really work if the solution, the hidden word that you were guessing was a word that most people could reasonably know. So I had this problem. I had 13,000 words. I needed to filter them down somehow to words that people would reasonably know. And um, one of the things I did, so Google has, uh, you know, they've archived like every book back to a certain point and they have like this engram fetcher tool. Basically, so I loaded those 13,000 words into it and I said, tell me how common, how frequent this word has occurred in the last 20 years in literature. And I thought that would be, you know, a programmery way to solve it, but I found that it was actually very inconsistent. I'm not sure the, 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 the quality of the, the, the books or things like that, it was really inconsistent. And so I tried another approach and that was I made a game, you could barely call it a game really, and what it was, it was a website you would go to and it would show you one of those 13,000 words and then it would ask you, uh, do you know this word? Do you not know this word? Or do you maybe think you know this word? And my partner, Bullock, uh, she categorized all 13,000 words. Uh, very I do think when people talk about Wordle and why it's successful, I think that gets overlooked because it's one of the things you just don't think about because of course the game works, but you don't think about the fact that every day when you play the solution is a word you reasonably know. And I think that's part of the reason it was able to spread and appeal to so many people. Because I think if you, that first time you played, if you didn't know the word, you would feel, uh, potentially feel cheated and you wouldn't come back and play again. Um, uh, yeah, and then the other thing I wanted to touch on, um, and, and this is really where kind of uh, crosswords and spelling bee as well come into it. Uh, Pollock and I, 
were playing a lot of crosswords, and really there was something about the daily habit that I just really, really enjoyed. And actually there was something I enjoyed about us doing, in, doing the, the games together. It was a really enjoyable shared experience. And so that was, that, if you remember that 2013 prototype that I made, you could just play endlessly. And so after playing a lot of the crossword and spelling bee, I was like, well, what if we just apply that same rule to this, to this game uh, that I made? And I think that had this huge impact um, that I didn't fully understand. Uh, for a, for a, and the impact was on a, a variety of different ways. One is that you just couldn't get burned out on the game. I think mobile games in particular, do this insidious thing where they want to capture your attention and want to capture it for as long as possible because that's how they make money from you. Uh, I wasn't trying to make money, so I didn't have to worry about that. I could just make uh, you know a nice game. Uh, then, um, thank you. Uh, and then the other thing was that if there's only one word a day, and that word is the same for everyone. Suddenly you've created this social experience where you can talk with other people about uh, the experience you had. And so I saw this, we were, Hulk and I were, have been playing Wordle since like January 2001. We were playing it for six months of just she and I, no one else. And I introduced it to my uh, family back in the UK. And they have like a, a WhatsApp family group that everyone texts in, but it kind of died down and like no one was really uh, texting in it and Wordle reinvigorated that and pe suddenly people started texting in the family group again so much so actually things got out of hand and they had to splinter it and create just the just the Wordle group and, and so this was in uh, this was in like June or July 2021 and so I'd seen this happening but I didn't fully realize and this was before there was like the emoji share grid or anything like that you would just Post in the group chat, you know, I got Wordle in three or whatever. Um, and what I didn't realize then, and what I think I should have seen, and it's just dumb luck that I stumbled into, is that people were really longing for a way to connect with one another. And Wordle provides this really, really lightweight way to check in with your friends and your family and your loved ones and just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. But you don't have to use big, heavy words like, I love you, or anything like that. <laughs> anything that demands a response, or like, we're gonna have a heavy conversation here. It's just like, hey, I'm thinking about you, and that's that's all it is. And it was kind of, I don't know, that's kind of amazing and heartwarming. Also a little tragic, I think, in that we are like so connected like to one another right now, yet we crave connection so much. So um, I know, I, know I, I, I think the popularity of Wordle gets talked about a lot in terms of like Twitter and like people sharing the grids on the feed and people complaining, you know, but actually the majority of people share their Wordle scores in private with their friends and family. And I think that's really, yeah, that's really interesting. Not something that I would have planned, but just something, uh, something that emerged. Um, and so I wanted to actually read to you a piece of an email that I got from a Wordle player. Uh, they say, uh, I'm a Wordler in Nebraska. Both my parents play now. We don't have a lot in common, even though we love each other a lot. I'm gay, they're conservative Christians. Wordle has given us a way to come together every day. My mother loves that regular contact with me, and it's something I enjoy too that distracts me from all the difficult differences that are between us. And um, that was like... And I, I feel like this must be... I'm sure you hear this with the crossword, right? Like, that the people can connect through these... Uh, through these uh, simple games and like there are things are fraught and you can't like say what you mean to people but like these games providing uh, a mechanism to connect with people in a kind of non-complicated way um so yeah so uh that is uh, those are my world stories uh for tonight feel free to come up and uh, and uh, chat with me um what we're going to do now is something uh that we haven't tried before where uh, Will asked if I could make a custom version of Wordle for you all to play. And uh, so we have a problem here in that normally you can only play Wordle once a day. We're going to break that rule tonight. Uh, you are going to be able to play six rounds of Wordle in one go. Um, in the spirit of competition, 
as well, we have tried to devise a scoring mechanic. I haven't done a lot of testing with this one, so <laughs> bear with me here. But so the way it's going to work, you are going to play six rounds of Will. We are going to give you three minutes for each round. And we ask you not to advance to the next round until the three minutes is up so we can keep everyone together. The way it will work, it's regular word or rules, but with some differences, which I will explain now. Um, at the end of a round, we will score you, and the goal is to get as low a score as possible. For every green tile you've revealed, it's zero points. Green tiles, really good. Uh, yellow tiles, or uh, orange or blue, I can't remember if you play in the high contrast mode, sorry. Um, <laughs> Uh, are worth one point, and grey tiles, so if the, if the letter that you guessed wasn't in the solution word, are two points. And if you fail to complete the word so you don't get it in six, uh, in six guesses, that's five points. This is explained uh, when, when on, on the game, I'll point you to. Um, so yeah, so over the six rounds, we are looking for the, the person who can score the lowest. So get the six solutions. Uh, with a few, few number of guesses. There's one other wrinkle in that across all six rounds, every word you enter must be unique. So those folks who start the same way every day, of which Will confessed he was a rose, was it a rose was your opener? Yeah, yeah, so uh, he's got to think about this one. Um, so the one exception to that is if you use a word and then in round, say you, in, in round six, oh sorry, in round one you guess a word and then that also happens to be the solution in round six, you will be allowed to enter it in round six. So you can't get stuck in, uh, in any, uh, any situation. Um, what's that? I'll, I'll tell you when to start, we're going to time the rounds just to keep everyone in uh, in sync. No, we're not, we haven't started yet, I don't think. I'm waiting for, for, for the blessing from Will. Let's start when you say go. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's, uh, alright, should, uh, should we get started? Yeah, okay, so you've got three minutes to do the first round. When you get to the end, a thing will pop up and show you your score and ask you if you want to go to the next round. Just wait there until the three minutes have passed and then we'll all advance together. You can chat to your neighbor as you go. This is meant to be fun, not, not serious. <laughs> yeah, you can begin now. All right, time's up. If you haven't quite finished, I guess you can... Maybe keep going. I don't know how many. Uh, is, uh, how many people got the answer within six? How many five within five? How many within four? How many within three? Anybody within two? Yeah. Impressive. I asked Josh before uh, uh, this past week if these words would be chosen at random, which is true. The words are chosen at random, or whether they would be chosen in meme mode, like jazzy or fuzzy. <laughs> but I think it's in friendly random mode. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, feel after the round, uh, after the three minutes is up, feel free to show your neighbors. You know, if you're uh, if you did really well, make sure everyone around you understands how well you did. <laughs> And I think, uh, I think, so the question is, the question is, have these words previously been used in Wordle? He is not, not necessarily, he could have been used before, yeah. Okay, let's start round two, go ahead, second round. Time, time is up. Time is up for round two. Everyone finish? Okay, how many, raise your hand if you got it within six guesses. If you got it within five guesses. Got it within four. Got it within three. 
Did anybody get it within two? Ooh. Okay. I'm not even going to ask for one. Once again, make, your, make sure your neighbors understand how brilliant you are. <laughs> and I, let's, uh, let's move on to round three. Okay, time is up. Everyone finished? All right, once again, raise your hand if you got it within six guesses. Got it within five. Got it within four. Got it within three. Got it within two. I have to ask somebody, so you got it in two. And uh, what was your first guess, if I may ask? Oh, he guessed trice. How lucky are you? Okay. Because I was about to ask. I, uh... Okay. So, terrific. All right. Let's, uh... I think we're ready for round four. Well, that is time for, what is that, the fourth round? Fourth round, okay, how many got it within, uh, within six guesses? Within five? Within four? Within three? Within two? Anybody? Yes, back here, what was your starting word? What was your first word? Lease. Lease, L-E-A-S-E, -E. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and then you were lucky enough to, I, I had lease as my third word, but then I guess tease. <laughs> so close. All right, you're keeping track of your scores. How many people have 100 points or less total? 90 or less? 80 or less? 70 or less? 60 or less, 50 or less, how many? What's your score? 48? Uh, what's your score? You have 50, anybody else? 51, okay. And uh, not to brag anything, and I'm serious, my score is 44. Maybe I'll take home the Wordle Prize tonight. <laughs> and you know, the fact that I said that, I just sank my chances. <laughs> Should not have said that. Okay, we are ready for round five. Time is up. Josh says that is the hardest word. I agree. Okay, who got it within six? Raise your hand. Who got it within five? Four? Whoa, three? Couple hands. Nobody got that in two, no? No, no, no. You got dodgy in two. Okay, what was your first guess? Say again? Dopey. Okay. Dopey, 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 good, good, good. I unfortunately guessed doozy at some point. That was uh, not good. All right, we got uh, one last round. Here we go. Start. Time's up. Okay, there we go. Just for, uh, let's keep it going. How many got within six on the last? Okay, within five, within four, within three. Within two, anybody? Okay. Um, well, there we go. I had to find out what your score is, and we're about to find find our winners. We'll have prizes for I don't know the top several. So. Uh, <laughs> 
we'll see how it will look with the tie. Everyone has their final score, right? How many have 200 points or fewer? Raise your hand. 190 or less? 180? 170? 160 or less? 150 or less? 140 or less? 130 or less? 120 or less? 110 or less? 100 or less? How many hands do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. Uh, 95 or less? One, two, three, how many hands do we have? We have uh, 92 or less? How many hands are there? A few, a few so 90 or less? Uh, 88 or less? 86 or less? Wow, 84 or less? How many hands are left for the 84 or less? What's your score? 80. 80. Uh, here? 67. 67. <laughs> and your score? 77. And there's no other hands up, right? So you three, uh, what's your name? And uh, back here? Your name, the, uh, oh, you're the, we'll come to you and you're in last. And what's your name? So you're in third place, you're in second place, and our champion, stand up, tell us your name. For the record, I had a hundred. I'm proud of myself for that. Josh, thank you for the fantastic game. And thanks for coming. Now we have a, a pick your poison contest. Michael, do we have the puzzles here? And here's how the game will work, and I think you know, there's two rounds. Each round you'll have 30 minutes. We'll hand out, uh, we'll give everybody both puzzles. So if you finish one before the 30 minute time limit, you can start the next one. Yeah. Judges, officials, uh, if you're an official, will you stand up? We're gonna need your help uh, passing out the papers. All the, all the officials in here, stand up. Come to the front, and we will pass out both the cryptic and the puns and anagrams to everybody. Is everybody ready? Don't start quite yet. Everyone set? On your mark, get set, go. 30 minutes. Time is up. If you're still working, you can keep your paper. Use it to work on some more between rounds tomorrow. But we have one more round tonight. Um, and officials, would you come to the front so we can pass them out? It's a spiral or a split decisions. Who still needs a split decisions? Raise your hand. Okay, if you have split decisions, look where the hands are up. And who still needs a spiral? Raise your hand. Okay, we haven't started yet. Please print your name on the back. That's number one. Print your name and contestant number. And write the name of the puzzle that you turned in for the first round. Cryptic or puns and anagrams. That will help us collate before we start. Now these puzzles I think are a little easier than the first round, and uh, we're getting close to the uh, wine and cheese reception, so we'll do 25 minutes for this. Uh, uh, split decisions, anyone still need? Spiral, anyone still need? Everyone ready? On your mark, get set. Go! 